Hi, this is Phil Hinton and welcome to another episode on avforums.tv. This is the first in our grand AV design series of programmes and we're here in the heart of England, although I'm not going to tell you exactly where because this is a rather special build. It's called the Bat Barn and I want to introduce you to the owner. Hi Mark. Hi Phil. So uh, Mark, this is a fantastic premises that you have mm -hmm. here. So which room has the cinema in it? Well, actually, the cinema's not in the house. Um, it's in a rather special addition we have to the house, just off to the side here. And actually, the well, I told my wife the main reason I wanted to buy this house is the barn. Um, it's not very often you get the opportunity to have a blank canvas like this to do whatever you want with it. Um, and my wife fairly quickly agreed that I could at least have the upstairs. We bought the house about a year ago. Uh, like many people on the forum, I've always dreamt of having a dedicated home cinema room. Uh, and Again, like most people, I've always had uh, home cinema setups in living rooms. and Obviously, you've got to compromise a bit, and the, the wife acceptance factor is always there. But my wife agreed I could use the top of the barn for anything I wanted. So right from day one, I was scheming what I was going to do with my new dedicated room. Um, and hopefully I can, uh, I can show you how it's turned out. Excellent. Well, this staircase looks uh, <laughs> a little on the risky side. Yes, it's, um, it can be treacherous, especially in the wet. And uh, yes, I can tell you, it wasn't easy getting some of the gear in here. Uh, I needed, uh, yeah, I needed a few extra hands to get some of this in here. <laughs> oh, no, this is very impressive. I've got to say that's, that's some sight to greet you as soon as you walk in. Yeah, one of the challenges we faced in here was the, the way that the walls pitch obviously that limits the the screen size and the, the, the particularly the the height that i could have in here now as soon as i saw what you could do with anamorphic lenses i knew i had to have a constant image height set up in here um, and basically that meant obviously if you think about the size of the screen the shape of the screen the wider it got the lower it got because the way the walls are so that was a challenge that uh, well it was pretty tough to overcome as far as uh, getting a, the screen size that I wanted but also uh, to have it um, not too low because of how wide it was um, but I'm pretty happy I mean I've got a 10 foot screen in here 10 foot wide approximately um, so I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the result and it hasn't gone too low I think uh, so that you see these in some of the most bespoke home cinemas on the planet and you've got a 19 inch rack here so what was the thinking about putting the a full 19 inch rack in well you know I, i've always had a, a an av rack like most people have in their in their living room that was sort of this kind of high glass shelves you know metal support and when i was planning the room and i was working out exactly how, how much equipment i'd need in here um, to do it justice, I quickly came to the conclusion that that would not suffice. Um, so fortunately I worked for an IT company who let me have a spare 42U rack um, for nothing. Um, it wasn't easy getting it in here, but I think it was worth it. Um, what we've done is we've bolted it to the floor and we've built this uh, sort of partition wall around it just to make it feel more part of the room really. So Mark, obviously this is the centrepiece of the cinema room, the Sony VW60 and the anamorphic lens. So maybe you can tell people a little bit about why you've got this here. Yeah, sure. I mean, obviously for 2.35 constant image height, there are two main components, um, your anamorphic lens and your projector. Uh, now, the reason I chose the VW60 in particular was because it's got a feature called anamorphic zoom, where if you imagine on a normal 16.9 screen, you'll have black bars top and bottom. What the anamorphic zoom feature does in the scaler, it, it, in the projector, it actually scales that vertically to fill the full panel then what the anamorphic lens does after that is then expand that horizontally to fill your big 2.35, 2.37 screen. Um, so as a combination, these two are quite a good sort of budget conscious way of, of, uh, of achieving a constant image height setup. And this is a Prismasonic FE 1500R. Um, one of the nice features of this anamorphic lens is that it also has a, a motorized um, lens element in it, which essentially means for 16.9, uh, i.e. non-scope films, I can, uh, from the comfort of my seat, uh, press a button on a remote control and that will actually move the, the elements inside the lens to effectively turn the 2.35 image back into a, a standard 1.78 image. Um, so you don't get any geometry issues of, of having abnormally stretched uh, 1.78 uh, um, films. So Mark, um, we we're talking about the projector being the centrepiece, but I guess this is the hidden centrepiece. Maybe you can tell people about what this is. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think they've generated quite, quite a lot of interest on the, on the thread, on the forums. Um, essentially, what you've got uh, with an infinite baffle subwoofer, um, obviously, it looks very different from a standard sub. Um, 
if you imagine a standard sub uh, in, in a standard subwoofer enclosure, um, that enclosure, um, however expensive that subwoofer is, the enclosure is going to colour the sound that that subwoofer produces. Uh, that there's no way around it. Um, also, what it does, the enclosure also has the effect of, of, of creating a, a high-pass filter. Now, obviously, that's something you don't get with, with an IP sub. So you think the high-pass filter in a, in a normal sub enclosure obviously will protect your driver from, from ex too, too much excursion, if you like. So you think, well, OK, in an IB setup, you're going to get a uh, sub base that is, is uncolored. So that's the first thing. But how are you going to protect your, your drivers from, from incursion? The way we get around that is we have big drivers and lots of them. <laughs> If, if you've got the space. Now, I've built a couple of boxes. These are to a standard design that, that the IB guys um, around the world now um, uh, tend to stick to. These are called manifolds. They're constructed of 3 quarter mil uh, MDF laminated to 3 quarter mil ply, which essentially makes them quite easy to machine, but also uh, very rigid. And it is, it is absolutely solid, this thing. Obviously, bolted to the, to the beams here. Um, I've got a driver in either side. Um, to counteract mechanical forces, essentially. So when you've got the two drivers uh, um, facing each other, you're not going to get any movement whatsoever. And it's absolutely true. It, you, I can turn this up to fairly offensive volumes upstairs, and there's absolutely no movement on this whatsoever. The rest of the barn moves, but this doesn't move at all. So Mark, what gave you the initial inspiration for the Bart barn? The main reason that going through all this was actually in the end quite an enjoyable experience was because I could share it with everyone on the forums and I had some guys round, some of my friends round to help me out and give me advice on, on what to do because it's, it's not the kind of thing you want to do on your own like this and, and being able to share it as a passion with people on the forums has been, has been fantastic um, and I've had so much feedback um, you know a lot of positive a little bit of negative and that's fine you know I, it, there's, a, there's a number of things in here that would have been different and would have been not as good I think if it hadn't been for, for the advice I've had on the forums. Taking on a project like this is quite a task, so were there any problems that you came um, up against which maybe could have jeopardised what you were trying to do here? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, the, the biggest challenge with this particular room was the room itself, and trying to work with the room, uh, uh, an example of that is, is mounting the projector. If you think, well, I've got essentially one place I can mount the projector, there's a beam across the room, uh, unless I want to start putting in new beams, which I think would look a bit odd, um, you're limited right there with, okay, I had to, so then I had to design the room around mounting the projector in one particular spot. Of course, you introduce an anamorphic lens into that, you introduce the limited numbers of projectors that will do the anamorphic zoom, um, which then affects, well, how big an image can I have at that fixed throw rate? Um, so uh, I think I compromised on a not too low, but still quite a good size screen and, I, and I'm pleased how it's ended up. Um, I think there are a few things maybe I'd do differently um, but overall I'm fairly pleased that within the budget I've had it's, it's worked out okay. So if we were to go back to day one and you were going to build uh, the Bat Barn again what would you do differently and is there any advice that you could give to forum members? I think planning from the outset uh, probably is the most important thing that I've learned. Um, I didn't plan everything. A lot of it I had to kind of make up as I went along. Um, there are things I would have done. I would have hidden the cables behind the walls. Didn't do that because I didn't quite know where everything was going. So I think I probably would have had to, done it in a bit more of a military plan kind of way. Um, but to be honest, the, the most valuable thing I've, I've found is, is asking questions because a lot of this, you, know, you think you know a bit about this kind of hobby, but actually there's, there, when you're building a room like this, there are so many factors to think about. Um, and, and there is somebody out there with the answer. And, and so asking lots of questions on the forums and doing a lot of research online, that, that's really uh, what's kept me going, I think, and getting the feedback from people as the build's been going on as well. Mm. That was so valuable. I don't know how my wife has put up with me spending so much time in here. That's another thing I'd recommend, that you have a, an understanding partner. Um, I think she's quite relieved it's done now. Um, and, and in fact, only last night we had our, our, our premiere viewing in here and, and I got the seal of approval, so that's good. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with the outcome and, and, and really pleased to, to have been able to share it with everybody on the forums. So, Mark, we've talking about the, the system in some detail now, so um, I think it's about time that you actually show me some material and we can see exactly what it's like. Okay, let's go. How did my back get down here?